I transitioned from my material world journey um, to uh, my my inner journey, and not in not in a weird way. Just in a way is I got to be okay with me. I can't give a fuck what anybody thinks, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like I don't even look at the box office anymore. I don't even want that in my mind, comparing myself to what other people are doing. And I had a brief moment there where I got stuck on the rock, you know, and he doing all these billion dollar movies and I got stuck in and that that animal woke up again. But I was like, you know what? It's like um, I realized there's never enough. You'll never earn enough money. You'll if you, if you stick yourself on sex, you'll never have enough sex. You'll never have enough of anything in the material world. So I'm into my space now where I'm letting go of that. And I just got to be good with me. I got to walk around. Uh, happy and comfortable with me no matter what the fuck nobody else think right. you know and that's where I'm at right now kind of detoxing my addiction to numbers and wins in comparison well I, I think it's so powerful that he is on that journey and yet still he's vulnerable enough to admit that he you know he got caught with the rock in terms of the comparison game and I think the detox word is probably what hit a lot of coaches at Florida the most because when you think about trying to get off of that addiction to that drug called approval, there's a detoxica detoxification process. You know, there's a wonderful line that says that success is intoxicating. Sustaining requires sobriety. And most of the time, people don't feel the sobriety unless there's pain involved and they're losing. That's absolutely right. I think it's, you can tell from him grappling with it that it's not an easy process. And it brings up your favorite line, which is what? Comparison is the thief of joy. And there's a wonderful um, video you're gonna see about this. So there's two monkeys, and you think about the DeMello line. There's two monkeys that are asked to perform the same task, but they're given different reward, rewards. Take a look. The one on the left is the monkey who gets cucumber. The one on the right is the one who gets grapes. The one who gets cucumber, note that the first piece of cucumber is perfectly fine. The first piece she eats. Uh, then she sees the other one getting grape, and you will see what happens. So she gives a rock to us, that's the task. And we give her a piece of cucumber, and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us. And that's what she does. And she gets a grape. And she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now, gets again cucumber. She tests the rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. And she gets cucumber again. You, you know what's crazy about that clip is because if you think about it, like in our athletic department setting is, you know, let's say I have a season. That's what those coaches look like. <laughs> when we're having the fit That's after right. uh, So I have a season that maybe I feel like I've really maximized my team's ability, um, but I haven't won a championship. And then down the hall, another team, you know, a couple of weeks later wins a national championship or any championship. And I'm now thinking like, oh, maybe my season wasn't so great after all. You know, it's that comparison issue that really gets us in trouble. No question. The next video we're gonna show is a coach who's young on our journey. Her name is Lisa Fortier. She is the Gonzaga women's basketball coach. And they were 23 and three this year, and they had an early exit in March, which brought up a bunch of pain, embarrassment, humiliation, all the things that are natural when you feel like you should have accomplished more. And so we started to try and unpack what that pain was teaching her. The reason we chose to show this video to you all today is because when we showed this at Florida, it was unbelievable, the discussion that followed. The reality is it's the thinking in your head that's telling you something, right? So check this out. It says, think of an event, identify the negative feeling. You've done that. The loss created sadness, embarrassment, frustration, doubt that you didn't prepare, all the different things, right? Hmm. And then it says, what does that say to you about yourself? 
your values, your way of perceiving the world, your programming, your conditioning. How would you answer that? Bane and um, needy for like accomplishment maybe or desiring accomplishment and desiring praise and like I, I act like I'm in more control than I am, or I have a, a sentiment or a, a feeling or a belief. You know, I've valued work ethic for my whole life. So, and maybe overvalue that. Um, mm, those would be some of the things. So what does that say to you? <laughs> I don't know. Why are you laughing? Because, like, it says that I, I don't like that that much. If you look at those things you say, you don't want to be those things. True or false? True. This event that you just went through is exposing all your vulnerabilities that are covered up by the 23 and 3 record. So, like, I think some of these feelings that I have are because... I care, but maybe it's because I care about these things, not about these guys being happy, these guys getting better, these guys growing as leaders, or like, is that what I'm getting confused? We're maybe? touching on some amazing stuff. Amazing. Because in college athletics, the head coach is synonymous with the brand while they're coaching there. Because mm -hmm. everything around is trying to convince the recruit that you are the best head coach in the country. And so you become so identified with the outcomes because that's you're conditioned to be that way. You see the graphics that are produced and sent out. You internalize all of those things. Think about that. We are trying to sell that to them, right? Is actually, I don't know if that's working for the recruits, but it's like, it's like affecting me almost, you know it what I mean? It everyone, because it's a drug. Van, that is as vain as it gets. I am better than everybody else come play for me. The need for achievement. Look at the, the cards you're sending out. I'm sure there's, what are those stats that you send? Let's call it out. I, I don't know what they are. This is hysterical though. What has Lisa Fortier done from an achievement standpoint that recruits need to know? Tell me about it. I don't, I don't know. What are the proprietary stats? How many times have you won this, uh, the conference? Like what's the winning percentage? Like, what is it that you guys sell to them? There has to be a couple bullet points. We tell them we win a lot. Like we how tell them No, 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 no. Externalize it. Don't cover it up. Just say, Hey, I, I don't do know. That. I don't know the numbers. So, but what do you sell to them? We tell them winning percentage championships. We sell them that I've been the coach of the year. And we usually say that, and I always say, which is true. It's a staff award, blah, blah, blah. This is my <laughs> coach of the year dance. <laughs> I want to play for her. You're a jerk. I need to. Uh, and, and the desire for praise. Look at this. We're deconstructing the artificial nature of everything you're doing. Look at the background. We've talked about it. Like literally look at it. I see it. So you like, why wouldn't those things be a part of you? It's what you sell everyone. I think that uh, the, to see her struggling to figure it out. I wish I had done that as a young coach. I mean, what, what important work she is doing. Um, I think the most salient point for me in that was when she talked about, am I more concerned about them growing as leaders, growing as women, or am I more concerned about getting them here to help me win? And I think that's a, that's a tough thought to wrestle with in your mind. Especially when you realize what a loss does to you. No that, doubt. I mean, that creates a lot of awareness. And, and I think that the, the vulnerability with which she speaks about that is so refreshing because she's willing to 
figure out like where does that take her? I, I remember one time I um, we had exited early in the NCAA tournament, and I had a friend that was a coach that had also exited early, so um, probably wasn't thinking ahead on this, but I you know reached out and I was like, hey, you know, I'd really love to talk to you about your early exit because I feel like, you know, we underachieved and I just kind of want to talk that through with you. How did you guys, you know, feel about you in underachieving? <laughs> and she's like, I don't think we underachieved. I was like, oh, let me backpedal out of this room a little. <laughs> but I think it's, it, it's hard to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about that. And so for her to explore that is amazing.